Hello everyone. I was out walking recently in an area called Maker, which is just across the River Tamar from me in, in here in Plymouth. And uh, it's a very lucky sort of uh, coincidence that I, I, was, I walked past an, an old defensive redoubt um, that was uh, being worked on. Um, there's a lot of conservation work going on in the area at the moment and um, fortunately there was a chap there who uh, let me in I had my camera with me so I, was, I took a few photographs f from the inside of it and I thought some of you might be interested in seeing it um, so the story of it is that um, this is this is a map dated 1808 um, and it shows four redoubts um that are, that are there on the maker heights um north is actually that way and um the redoubt that i that i came across and had a quick look round was this one here redoubt number four um which was renamed grenville battery in the, at the end of the 19th century um now it was originally constructed in during the american war of independence um Basically, if I show you another map, so this 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 is a map from uh, we're not well. It's a map showing the area in the eighteen sixties. So a lot of a lot of the dockyard area and so on didn't didn't exist in that form. Obviously, the railway line and so on didn't exist in during the American War of Independence. Um, but the area of the Maker Heights is here. Now, um, what happened in 1779, in August 1779, was that the French and the Spanish put together um, an invasion fleet um, with the intention of landing troops in Sussex. Um, but what they also wanted to do was to incapacitate um, the, uh, the, any sort of naval, British naval efforts to interrupt their invasion. So they placed um, six frigates here in Corsan Bay. Um, now that um, scared the uh, authorities because um, they realised that had had any forces been landed at this at this small place here called Corsan, they could have marched over the Maker Heights and got with well within um, artillery range of the dockyard and the river tamar and being able to block off the um, river tamar to traffic but also uh, damage the, um, the strategic area of the dockyard almost with impunity so um, they promptly began the construction of a line of defenses across here to kind of choke off, block off that point. So what they ended up with, and again, this map, um, you have to ignore a lot of it because it's, um, it's showing the fortifications at the time of 1850. But what they ended up with was the four redoubts there, one, two, three, and four, a fifth and a sixth redoubt a little bit further back and another redoubt at, the, at an area called Kreml which would have been the last line of defence had these um, redoubts been taken troops would have been pushed back to Kreml and then that would have been the, that would have been the way that they would have um, escaped across the River Tamar into Plymouth had you know had things um, not gone well for them um, I just want to show you as well a view of the heights from my window which might give you a little bit more um, idea about how strategically important, important the maker heights were right so this will give you a little bit of uh, an idea about the strategic importance of the maker heights um, what you're looking at there it, uh, over the rooftops in the distance is Mount Edgecombe which is on the other side of the River Tamar you can just about make out the mouth of the River Tamar there and along the ridge um, you come to an area 
you can see a church tower there on the horizon that is that they are the maker heights and over the over the crest of the hill um, on the coast beyond is the village of Corsand and uh, and the village of Kingsand the neighboring villages and that was the area that it was feared um, the French might land a force at then they could march over the hilltop and um, down the hill and their guns although you can't see any of it um, Devonport Dockyard is kind of the area just beyond where those uh, houses are um, so the guns would have been well within range of of the dockyard to do it damage and to block off traffic in in the river Tamar okay now to get an idea of how overgrown this area was you will have to uh, google Granville Battery Plymouth um, there is a photograph on Wikipedia of the area um, of, from um, I think it's 2006 and it's basically just a green mound you would bet you would hardly know that there was a, a fort underneath it and you can see some of the uh, effects of clearing here this is a view of the east side um, and you can see that the defensive ditch there has been stripped of all the vegetation um, the dark area is probably the height of of the vegetation on the wall um, you can see the uh, ivy and and so on that's grown up the walls and you can see on the ramparts at the top there there's still quite a lot of growth there um, so the whole thing you know was completely covered in in growth but they've now not only stripped all the vegetation down but they've uh, constructed a little footpath just beyond that uh, um, projection of the defences there and it leads down to the coastal footpath so it's fairly easy to access this spot here um, this is this is a view from the same spot only looking um, in the other direction and these the the the, the, the important thing to realize is that the redoubt was um, worked on right through the 19th century so this area here with these rifle slits um, was built in the sort of middle of the 19th century around the time of the Palmerston's Follies as they were known so a much kind of wider defensive ring of fortifications around Plymouth and its surroundings um, <coughs> so these but these 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 redoubts were strengthened and changed in their purpose um, at the time of Palmerston's uh, constructions ma mainly because the core sand and king sand were no longer on the periphery of of Plymouth's defences so they were right almost in the centre of a circle um, so there was less threat of an invasion force actually landing there um, so the fort ceased to be important to uh, cut off any attack and became more significant because it has a good view out to sea as you'll see later and uh, got uh, some 12.5 inch muzzle rifled uh, muzzle loading guns were, were placed there to pointing out to sea I'll show you that in a moment but the actual um, entrance to the fortification was um, strengthened so that uh, it couldn't be taken from the rear um, this is a view up from the coastal path at the uh, redoubt and I'm pretty sure this really overgrown part here would have been um, part of the earlier defences not entirely sure about that because you can still see the rifle slits a bit lower down 
but that to the left there that is the point the uh, the part of the redoubt that points to the west points to the potential invasion invaders um so i think probably that high point there was possibly part of the earlier redoubt um it's another view of it there it gives you an idea of how much growth there was on it it was, it was almost completely buried um it was used by um people uh, squatting their kind of caravans in it and uh, it was full of rubbish and and so on there's been an awful lot of clearance done of it um this is another view from the um the eastern side of the uh defensive ditch looking out to sea um that area of land on the other side is actually over in in devon um so it's not it's not the area of um Corsan that uh, the where the French frigates were landed but you can see a warship going past there and um, it gives you an idea of how um, the guns up that were placed on this redoubt would have had some you know would have been able to bear onto any enemy ships that came into Plymouth Sound um, so we're now on the inside um, the entrance is, uh, you know, through that area that had the rifle slits is to your left. And uh, so you're still looking south, as it were. Um, and you can see some of the more modern uh, defences that were placed there. Um, they look to me like they were sort of World War II defences. But actually, reading on Wikipedia, um, the, the redoubt ceased to be used um, in the 19, late 1920s. Um, but basically what happened was that the original redoubt had 15 gun em embrasures pointing uh, westward, so that would be to the right of this uh, view. And then in the mid 19th century, two 12.5 inch rifled muzzle loading guns were placed about where you're looking there at the sort of right hand side of the screen. Um, one there and one bit further off t off screen to the right and then I think it was at the end of the 19th century or the early part of the 20th century um, those two ri rifled cannon were replaced by three 4.7 inch quick firing guns but they were also pointing out to sea um, again you can see um the, the chap who uh, led us in was uh discouraged us from actually going inside anything because uh, there was a lot of uh unsafe masonry and so on but it gives you an idea of the how densely overgrown the whole thing was um so even even the outside is you have to be a little bit careful because there's a lot of uneven ground and uh stairways and so on such as this one this is leading down um, into the magazine beneath the um, southern facing part of the the redoubt so again sort of uh, mid 19th century doesn't it's not the uh, original part of the redoubt that's looking at the main entrance again um, so on the other side of that is is that ditch defensive ditch facing eastwards with the rifle slits and the photograph is taken from um, the sort of west facing part of the redoubt so the original uh, part of the redoubt dating back to the American War of Independence that's a view west looking at the defensive ditch that um, was place there at the time at the original time so that's part of the original defensive ditch um, that's a little bit more to the left the original part of the defensive ditch in the distance there you can now see uh, the villages of Corsand and King Sand um, and that is where it was feared that the uh, French could uh, potentially land an invasion force um, that would then come up this come up the heights here and uh, be met by this defensive ditch and redoubt 
um, and again you can see how densely covered the whole area is with vegetation now um, just gives you an idea of how much work they've done on on trying to clear this space uh, that's from the same spot only looking just to the left so it's now facing south and a little bit of the mid 19th century um, part of the defences another view of it there so there are in those sort of circular areas there are pits um, and they they would have housed the uh, sort of rotating mechanism of the of the guns um, underneath that is that that area just off on the left of the screen there fenced off is the uh, steps down to the magazine which would have been underneath uh, this area here um, again looking back at the main entrance Ah, oh, now that is looking uh, what would that be north and in the distance there you can see redoubt number three um, so that's part of the defensive line and that gives you an idea again of uh, how covered in uh, vegetation they are you you know apart from the fact that it's got a, a sort of very uh, regular shape to it you would almost think that was a natural feature of the uh, of the of the terrain that's another door into uh, the magazine and un I think that's underneath the original part so th that may well date back sort of quite a little bit earlier than the mid 19th century that's another view of the main entrance that's a view from you can see uh, one of the the pits just at the bottom of the screen there and that's a view looking out that white area is actually one of the uh, Palmerston forts Fort Picklecombe um, which is difficult to see from this uh, perspective but it's actually based on the uh, Russian fortifications at Bomersund in the in the Baltic um, you know which we uh, are one of our naval efforts attacked during the Crimean War uh, another view looking at the breakwater which again was built during the Napoleonic era so it wouldn't have been there um, at the time of the original construction of these redoubts so you're looking that's kind of southwest, I suppose. So you're looking across the breakwater, across the Devon and the Mewstone. Um, is that little singular island on the right there? Uh, this is uh, another view back into the fort from that same part. So the ramp there on the left is leading up to the original redoubt. Um, that would have had that was. I think that was disarmed in at the time of about 1815 so the originally on the left there there would have been 15 gun embrasures pointing to the west that's the view again from more or less the same spot looking out core sand is just off to the right of the picture there and that is Penley point there on on the at the tip and that is about the area where the French frigates the six frigates would have anchored another view down at the main entrance and again you can see the redoubt number four sorry number three in the on the horizon there another view of the inside um, another one just gives you an idea of the uh, work that's still to be done on this to make it safe to to visit I'm sure that's their, their final intention is to make it more of a, a landmark for, for walkers to um, look around as they go go past on the coastal path you can see the remains of a chimney flue there 
that's um, as you go through the gate um, area there's there are rooms to the right and the left so they would have been used presumably for um, guards and sentries and so on so you can see the remains of a chimney place there this is the other to the left same same one and the same thing another chimney there now we're back on the outside similar view to the one you saw before another view from the outside looking down at um, Fort Picklecombe and just on the, the bottom right hand corner there you can see the uh, steps that they've built there a little footpath that leads down to the coastal path or one of the paths that leads along the coast um, making it easy for walkers to get up and have a look around and that's the end of the show yeah the only other thing i wanted to say was how um it struck me this would make a really interesting war game um you know set during the american war of independence if if the french had landed a force there because the area is is really um you know it's a really sort of tightly packed area with some very interesting terrain so you could have um the village of Corsan down the bottom there on the coast and just this area here it's almost it's almost a rectangle it would fit it would fit you know really well on a war games table with the four redoubts there the principal um you know uh, objective of the invading force a further two uh, redoubts there um, the sort of fallback position and then the final fallback position of the redoubt um, there at Cramwell you don't really even need to show any of the uh, the river or anything that could just be the edge of the table and um, you know the objective obviously is to drive the British defenders off of off of the table, you know, by pushing them back successively into each each of the uh, defensive redoubts. But yeah, I mean, I haven't unfortunately I haven't got any uh, American War of Independence figures to to do it. But um, I just thought that would make a really you know a sort of hypothetical scenario for uh, a what if kind of war game. Anyway, that's all I've got to say. I'll stop watching wittering on at that point i hope you've enjoyed that i just thought i'd put them up as uh i i they i thought they might be of interest to some of you uh thanks very much for watching bye for now